In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation. And as always, it's great to be with all of you. Great to be with all of you on this uh, last day of the year. So as we enter into our conversation, uh, probably many of you have heard that uh, Pope Benedict XVI passed away early this morning. He was 95 years of age, uh, so he was Pope Emeritus for about nine years. And we'd like to offer our prayers in our program for this great man of God. So let's offer our, our Hail Mary as well as our, our prayers uh, for his repose, that if he's not already in heaven, that the Lord would take him to heaven as soon as possible. <clears throat> Mary is indeed the mother of God. <clears throat> Mary is the mother of the church. Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. So let's pray the prayer that Mary loves most, and that prayer is the Hail Mary, together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Now let's uh, turn to our spiritual director and Holy Spirit, of course, is our spiritual director. Holy Spirit is uh, has many titles, and he is the Paraclete. He's also known as the Gift of Gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the Sweet Guest of Our Souls. Holy Spirit is also known as Our sanctifier. Holy Spirit is also known as our consoler. The consoler as well as our counselor. The Holy Spirit is also our teacher, our interior master. St. Paul says that we really don't know how to pray as we ought but the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans, so we can say, Abba. So let's uh, offer in a special way this prayer of the Holy Spirit for the eternal repose of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth that Sophie's already posted. For us, we'll pray that just the great patrimony that he's left us will live on forever. One of the greatest thinkers in the history of Christ Christianity, obviously, is Pope Benedict XVI, Cardinal Ratzinger. So let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be, world without end. Amen.
Well, Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Archangel Raphael, pray for us. Saint Sylvester Pope, pray for us. Saint John Paul II, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. So my friends, on this last day of the year, I'd like to pray for all of you in a special way in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Right, and the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is by far the greatest of all prayers. I'd like to place all of you on the altar in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. This last day of the year, which I'll pray will be the best day of the year for all of us, and it will start a new year under the protection of Mary Most Holy which we celebrate tomorrow, Mary, the Mother of God, and the World Day of Peace. So these will be my following intentions. As mentioned earlier, we were informed that the Holy Father the Pope Emeritus, uh, Pope Ben the Sixteenth, died early this morning. So, yesterday, in Saint John Lateran, they were praying the Mass. They were saying a Mass for him shortly before he died. In the Church of Saint John Lateran, the church was packed with priests and bishops. So, I'd like to pray for him. I'd like to pray for Father Dave, who's with us, who celebrates his anniversary as a priest. He was ordained in 1988, on the last day of the year. So I'll pray for him and his intentions also. So the eternal repose of Pope Ben the Sixteenth. pray for Father Dave Jankowskis in his anniversary. I'd like to pray for you and your families as we come to the end of this year. We'll be starting a new year. That this new year will be a year filled with blessings for all of you and your family members. I'd like to also pray in a special way, as is my custom, for those who, for the Holy Father that passed away, but also for those who, those who will be dying as we come to this last day of the year, that this will be the last day of the life of, of some, as it was in the case of Pope Ben the 16th that they would die in God's grace and be saved. So that they would be, they would die in God's grace and his friendship and be saved. That will be another intention I'd like to offer in my mass that I'll be celebrating today. In all of your intentions, So may God bless all of you as we end this year and we start a new year.
So I'd like to do, starting off our conversation today, I'd like to just uh, give a brief tribute to uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict the 16th, who's passed away. Just give you a brief summary to pay honor and tribute to this great man of God. First of all, I'll just give you a brief summary because it's uh, such a great man of God. He merits our honor, our respect, our prayers, and our homage. He was born in Germany in the year 1927, in April 1927. He would eventually have a brother also that becomes a priest. He was a great intellectual. He was ordained a priest. And he was also, interesting, he was actually at the Second Vatican Council as a young priest with John Paul II and Fulton Sheen. He was a great intellectual. He was a teacher at the university. He was a profound writer and intellectual. He's chosen to be the Archbishop of Munich in Germany. Munich. Shortly after John Paul II, In 1981, he was already a cardinal then. He was chosen to be the head of the the um, the doctrine of the faith, which oversees the the the, the teachings of the of the church. So from 1981 until the year 2005, those 24 years, he was the right-hand man of John Paul II. So he was the head of the, of the doctrine of the faith. Now, year 2005, John Paul II died. John Paul II died April 2nd, 2005. At the Mass of the Holy Father, Cardinal Ratzinger, he was chosen to give the homily. And I thought when he was given the homily that he would be the next pope. That was my in, that was my intuition. People cried out uh, about John Paul II, subito santo, make him a saint right away in Italian. Then the elections occurred. What's called the conclave, and. Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger was chosen to be the Pope. And this was in the year 2005, shortly after the death of Pope John Paul II. He chose as his papal name, Benedict. In honor of St. Benedict of Nursia, who was the patron saint of Europe, 
founder of the Benedictine order. Perhaps because the Holy Father wanted to restore Christianity to Europe, which was and still is fastly declining, the Christian heritage of Europe. Now, Pope Ben the Sixteenth would be Pope from the year two thousand five. up to the year 2013. And then he uh, he retired as, as Pope, which is part of canon law. If the Holy Father does not feel he is capable of carrying out this mission, he can resign, which is the first time this happened in in about 500 years. So for the past nine years, he was Pope Emeritus. There's much that can be said about this great Pope, and I believe he was a great Pope, a great man of God, a holy man. A very holy man. No one can doubt the intellectual caliber of this great man. Perhaps one of the most brilliant popes that we've ever had, but a holy man too. His desire was basically to retire and um, dedicate himself to the intellectual life and to writing, but God wanted him to be the head of the church. that he humbly accepted. Having been the right-hand man of John Paul II for a good 24 years. Good 24 years. Now the accomplishments of this Pope and those close to eight years was quite a bit. I would like to just highlight among his many accomplishments, I'd like to just highlight among his many accomplishments some of his, some of his writings. Okay, his first encyclical, Deus Caritatis. Just mention a, a couple. Deus Caritatis, which means God is love. When it came out, it became one of the most, if not the most, published and purchased encyclicals in the history of the church. In the history of the church. That's right. This encyclical became one of the most published and read and purchased encyclicals in the history of the church. And the topic is basically God is love. I wish the Holy Father will go through the different dimensions of love.
In Greek, there are actually four words for love. Eros, philia, storge, and agape. The next, he wrote an encyclical with the title Spes Salve. So I read the first one on love. The next one he wrote Spes Salve, which was an encyclical on hope, the virtue of hope. Very important virtue in our modern world in which so many people are losing hope. Then he wrote, he wrote also what were called apostolic exhortations. Now I'd like to mention a couple of his apostolic exhortations. And it's very interesting, these apostolic exhortations, as if they were they were building upon the documents of Vatican II. They're building upon the documents of, of Vatican II. The first of these would be Sacramentum Caritatis. This was a document written on the liturgy and the mass. Which you might even say it was building upon the, apos the uh, apostolic constitution, dogmatic constitution, Sacramenta Caritatis. Sacramenta Caritatis was building upon the dogmatic constitution on the liturgy from Vatican II, Sacrosanto Concilium. pointing out the very heart of our Catholic faith is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. There's one point that I've gleaned from Sacramento Caritata that I use pastorally, and it's the following. When there are funeral Masses, when there are weddings, this is I took I took from this document Sacramento Caritatis event the sixteenth. We should give a brief catechesis to the people in the church. A brief catechesis to the people in the church on on what the Eucharist is and who can receive communion. And this is what I do in the weddings and funeral masses in Spanish or English. After I have received the body and blood of Christ, I tell the people there in the church that we've arrived at the most important moment of mass, which is receiving Holy Communion. They point out to the people, this is the most important moment in the Mass, but Holy Communion is truly the body, the blood, the soul, and the divinity. Holy Communion is truly the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then they go on to say, that only practicing Catholics 
only practicing Catholics who have been to confession and are in the state of grace can receive worthily this great sacrament. Then they tell the people, you who come up to receive communion, come up with great reverence. And I point out what that means. Coming up with great reverence would be to have your hands folded, a reverential bow, when the priest says the body of Christ respond amen, which means I believe. Receive our Lord with faith, devotion, and love. Go back to your places and talk to him within your hearts. Talk to him within your hearts. So why even apply this uh, apostolic exhortation of Pope Ben the Sixteenth to my pastoral life? Another thing that we've applied that I've applied we've applied is during the pandemic. It was impossible for some people to make it to Mass, so we suggested the practice of what is called the spiritual communion. What St. Alfonso Liguori expounds upon in detail, but the spiritual communion. Spiritual communion would be that if you can't receive sacramental communion, you can receive the Lord spiritually in your hearts. The prayer would be as such. Lord Jesus, I really believe that you are present in Holy Communion, in your body, blood, soul, and divinity. I cannot receive you now sacramentally, but come at least spiritually into my heart. then praise the Lord within your hearts. So those are a couple ideas that are expressed in that apostolic exhortation of Pope Benedict XVI. Another one of his documents is also building upon one of the Dogmatic Constitutions of Vatican II, De Verbum, Pope Ben XVI wrote what is called Verbum Domine, which is which means the Word of God. So the Pope insisted, my friends, that we get in the habit of reading the Word of God. Get in the habit of reading and meditating upon the Word of God. That's right. Reading and meditating upon the Word of God. St. Jerome, who translated the Bible from the Aramaic and Greek into the Latin, into the Vulgate, is quoted in De Verbum. Ignorance of sacred scripture is ignorance of Christ. How can we possibly know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if we don't read and meditate upon his word? Which the psalm says, it's a light and a lamp for my steps, for my path. The Second Vatican II and Sacrosanta Concilium says that there are two tables. There are two tables for 
from which we should be nourishing ourselves. Give us this day our daily bread. And that would be the table of the Word of God and it would be the table of the body and blood of Christ. The table of the Word of God and the table of the body and blood of Christ. Going back now to the apostolic exhortation of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, Verbum Domine, the Word of God. I'd like to just glean one of the ideas from Verbum Domine, and it's the following: that Pope Benedict the Sixteenth gives us a biblical method and I've posted it for you Lectio Divina Lectio Divina my friends is a is a classical means of Reading the Word of God. This is a classical traditional method that it is utilized to read, meditate, and derive a lot of profit from the Word of God. This you can find in the Apostolic Exhortation of Pope Benedict XVI. In this, Pope Benedict Emeritus gives us various steps, various steps to derive profit from our meditating upon the Word of God, and I'll give them to you. And the first is called, it's called, It's called Lectio. Lectio. So you, Lectio means read. You take the sacred text and you read it. How important it is, my friends, how important is, my friends, the importance of good reading. In this modern technological world where the social media is dominating so much that we're losing the habit of good solid reading to nourish our minds. Good solid reading to nourish our minds. So we have the sacred text in our hands and we read. We might even say with the young Samuel in the temple, Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. That's right. Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. The next step We're talking about Pope Ben the Sixteenth, his apostolic exhortation, Verbum Domine, in, in which he has a prayer method called Lectio Divina. The second would be, you can see if you know Spanish or Italian, it's almost the same. And it's uh, Meditatio. What do we mean by meditatio? Well, you have in that word meditatio is Latin, and it means, of course, to meditate. To meditate. 
various words, synonyms we can use for the word medita meditation or meditation. And I'll give you a couple. Ponder would be one. But if we actually go to the Greek, the Greek would be to ruminate. The Greek would actually be to, to ruminate. To ruminate. And actually ruminate is what a cow does. A cow is chewing chewing the hay, chewing his cud. So to read slowly, seriously, and to think through what is the meaning, what is the meaning for me of this biblical text that I am focusing upon. And to honor Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, whose feast day we celebrate tomorrow as the Mother of God, actually twice in the Gospel of St. Luke, we have Mary doing this. She's meditating or pondering the Word of God in her heart. That's right, she's meditating or pondering the Word of God in her heart. In two different circumstances. First is when the shepherds come to visit the child Jesus. It says, Mary, for her part, she pondered these things in her heart. Then after Jesus is lost, he's lost and found after those three days in the temple. It says, Mary, for her part, she pondered the word of God in her heart. Mary pondered the word of God in her heart. So in honor of St. Benedict, we're going through one of his writings. It's called Verbum Domine, which is on the importance of the Word of God, how we should be applying ourselves to reading and meditating upon the Word of God in our hearts. The third step of Alexia Divina, according to Pope Benedict using this typical method called Lecture de Divina. You can see it there, contemplatio. Now, contemplatio is the following. We are utilizing the different faculties that God has given to us. Lectio, we're using the eyes that God has given to us. Meditatio, we're using the intelligence that God has given to us. And then, contemplatio means we're actually utilizing Our faculty, which is called, our faculty, which is called our imagination. That's right. We're utilizing our the faculty, which is called our imagination. We use our imagination. Saint Ignatius would call it the composition of place. We try to place ourselves in the scene. We try to place ourselves in the scene. And give you an example. The apostles are in the boat with Jesus. And he's 
asleep on the cushion below. The storm, the storm descends upon the lake. The winds are strong, water is leaking into the boat. The apostles were professional fishermen. They're terrified because they believe that the boat, the boat is going to sink. They wake up the Lord and say, Lord, we are perishing. He says, men of little faith, he gets up and he says, be quiet. And the storm calms down and there's peace. So by contemplatio, you are trying to imagine that you're actually in the boat with Peter, James, and John. You to try to imagine that you're in the boat with Peter, James, and John. <clears throat> and the boat is about to sink and you cry out, Lord, save me. Then you take that biblical passage, having used your imagination, then you apply it to your own life. What are the storms, what are the storms in your life that you've gone through? Maybe some of the storms in your life have been major, maybe others have been, storms have been minor. Some have been major, some have been minor. Then with that contemplation of Christ vivid in your imagination, you carry that into your life. You carry that into your life such that the next time you have a storm in your life, some problem in your life, Instead of giving in to despair, you cry out, Lord, save me. And as our Lord calmed the storm 2,000 years ago, he can calm the storms in your lives. That's right, as the Lord calmed the storms 2,000 years ago, he can calm the storms of your life. So this lecture divina, which is a tool by which we can go deeper in our prayer life, can influence our whole lives, our relationship with Christ, but also our relationship with Christ in our daily dealings and our daily problems that we go through. So after the contemplatio, Pope Ben the Sixteenth gives the fourth step, and that is its oratio. Oratio. Many of you are bilingual. And the word oratio in Spanish, oración, orar, prayer or to pray. means that we open up our minds, our hearts, and we, we talk to God. That's right. We open up our minds and our hearts and we, we talk to God. 
Saint Ignatius will would use a lot, utilize the word colloquy or, or colloquy in English. And that means it means a heart to heart conversation with God. The other day we talked about prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God. So we're utilizing, we're utilizing the Word of God as a trampoline or a jumping board to launch us into the immense waters of contemplation. To launch us into the deep waters of contemplation. Oratio. Talk to the Lord. Open up your hearts and talk to the Lord. Never forget that painting, Il Amigo Que Nunca Falla. Jesus is the friend that will never fail us. Earlier this week, we celebrated the feast day of St. John the Evangelist. Jesus had three very good friends. Peter, James, and John, but he also wants you to be one of his best friends. That's right. Peter, James, and John were his best friends, but he wants you to be in that inner circle. Oratio. Prayer. Oratio. Prayer. Pope Benedict has a fifth step you're just tuning in. I'm honoring in a special way Pope Benedict XVI Emeritus who passed away just a few hours ago. And the next step that he gives us is very interesting. It's called it's called Axio. In that word you can see in that word you can see the word axio means action. Action. In other words, not only do we want to meditate upon the word of God, but we also we want to allow the word of God to change us, to move us, to motivate us. Pope Francis put it this way, we should go from the mind, the heart, to the feet. That's pretty good. So the Pope Francis says we want to go from the mind, the heart, to our feet. And who's the model for this? A great model for this is the person of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary is our example. Okay, Mary, Mary is our example. When we see this, the Lectio Meditatio Contemplatio, we can see that in the Annunciation. Mary's meditating, pondering, reflecting, ruminating upon the Word of God. During the Annunciation. Then we see Mary taking the word of God, which she takes within her heart. Then Mary moving upon the word of God in what is called the visitation. 
So Mary goes from the mind, intellect, imagination. She goes from there to her feet, which she goes in haste to visit her cousin Elizabeth. So the word of God that we meditate upon, like Mary, should not be something dormant or hidden or asleep within us. But rather, may the word of God motivate us to do great things for God. Those are the steps that we we find outlined in that apostolic exhortation of Pope Benedict XVI, Verbum Domine, to help us to plumb the depths to plumb the depths of the Word of God. To plumb the depths of the Word of God. So once again, my friends, honoring and paying tribute to Bennett XVI by going through what would be considered his key documents, Deus Caritatis, Spes Salve, those are his encyclicals. And two of his most famous apostolic exhortations would be Sacramenta Caritatis. And the one that I'm summarizing, one of the points that I'm summarizing now is the other apostolic exhortation, which is called Verbum Domine. Word of God, which is a comment on the importance of reading and meditating upon the Word of God. And I would add a last point to this writing of John Paul of uh, Ben the Sixteenth. And I'm just adding this, and it would be the last point would be the result and I write down wrote down for you transformatio what I mean by transformatio my friends is this We take the word of God in our in our hands, and we read it very carefully. Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. And we meditate upon it in our hearts. We go from the written word, meditating upon it. In our mind and it sinks into our hearts. Then we contemplate which we become part of the scene itself. We become part of the scene, part of the life of Christ. Then we open up our hearts and we talk to the Lord in a colloquy using our own words. And then we move into action. 
which we try to put into practice. We try to put into practice the word that we meditated upon. Then the net result will be what I've just written right now. And that is the word transformatio, which obviously means transformation. Which we can say with St. Paul, it's no longer I who live no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. So let's pray for Father Dave, who celebrates his priestly anniversary today. But so let's also pray in a special way for the repose of that great, the great Pope who just died a few hours ago. And his name is Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. May he rest in peace in the hearts of Jesus and Mary. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.